So for today I have a first in a series of short videos on rendering Chrome and just a little discussion about reflectivity and different levels of reflectivity. I found this um, Mickey Mouse uh, sculpture. This is not a CGI piece. It really looked like CGI to me when I first found it, but it's really a, a physical object. This is what I would describe as liquid Chrome. Extremely high contrast. You can see by the, the way shapes have hard edges and these rapid, rich transitions out of dark into light. We're talking about a highly reflective surface. Problems with reflective surfaces. You can see there are things in the studio shot in the room that reflect into the surface. If I'm illustrating something like this, that's got to go. This repeating shape, you got to clean this kind of stuff up. This area looks very nicely, but you can see the photographic setup shows in the top of the ear. So what I would do in a situation like that is I would actually simplify that. Take out the camera, take out the light, leave the shape. Um, what I'm going to do today on this first video is I focused on the hand just to give you a simplified, simplified version of how I reduce down shapes to three tones. Before I do that, just a little discussion about reflectivity in different levels. So this is a bronze or pewter, I would say pewter uh, piece, same subject basically. And you can see the difference in reflectivity in this. Uh, we have no hard reflections. The darks are not 100%. They are more like 70, maybe 80, 90 in the deepest shadows. Highlights have soft edges, no sharp edges. You still have light, dark, high contrast uh, with maximum light, zero or 10 next to maximum dark in places, but the transition is soft. There's usually no hard edge unless there's an actual edge on the object, like right here around the buttons on his pants. The eyes, even these edges around the eyes are slightly softened because pewter has that attribute. You see a lot more mid-tones, fewer extreme darks and lights. Then, just as, uh, it's really cool, I found this uh, subject in four different materials. Here's uh, black plastic or black chrome. And you can see, same level of reflectivity, but look what's going on. Our highlights are the only white thing, <laughs> only tone in the, above 10% on this piece. The highlights have contracted. The mid-tones have also contracted, and the dominant tone you see is 80-90 over the entire object. If I was rendering this, I would draw it out just the way you see here, and then I would proceed to block in all these 80, 70, 80, 90 tones, and just fill all that and just leave white where I see a bright highlight and then do my, my mid-tone transitions white of the paper 67, or actually 60, 50, 40, 30 and so I'd almost be rendering in reverse just to give you an idea of different approaches to the same subject you change with the reflectivity of the subject so having uh, drawn this out just to kind of show you this is the level of simplicity on the drawing you want to have. Um, I was observing the drawings I was getting in on the our first texture of the chrome object. Chrome and glass, you want to keep your drawing simple and light. And I will suggest, so I've got an extra mark here which I'm just going to knock out. Your heaviest lines are going to be outer shapes or the edges of black highlights like right here. Anything that's really a soft tone I'm even going to knock this back further and make it almost go away. And the reason is, once I put marker down here, if I start blending across that, I have a line stuck there. You don't see a line here. Same thing with bright highlights. If you have a soft transition uh, on a highlight and no hard edge, I'm not going to put a heavy stroke there. You can see right here, this is about a 40-50 uh, gray next to a near white highlight. So I want to see that shape. I put it in very lightly. Uh, I also did something else. You'll see I put a little bit of tone in the darkest areas. Just a guide for me to say, oh yeah, that's where I'm going to start. And on that note, I'll do exactly that. So, you can start by inking as you did on the chrome faucet, or you can start with a dark marker. I'm using a 90 here. And what I will do is I will just block in all these shapes that I shaded. This will not be the, the ultimate darkest tone. 
this, uh, I should say it will eventually be, but I'll probably, before I'm done, we'll go back into these dark areas three more times. I probably will not use 100% black. I do have it on standby in case I need that tone. So this is your 100% black. And just, I've talked about this and I say don't use it unless <laughs> you really need to. If you look, very rich tone. It does serve a purpose. If I put 90 next to that, now it doesn't look too much different on the video, but this has a much greater density. This 100% black is probably a little dry. And that actually could work to my advantage. I can, for example, go into that and stay just away from the edges and drop in the tone and say, okay, I'm going to take a chance here. I just can't afford to blend across this dark area. If I do, let's just do a test here. You can see the smearing and you see the red tone that comes out of there and then I got to scrub out my uh, blender. If I do the same thing here, nothing. Uh, my 90 does not bleed like that, but this red bleeds a red pigment because it contains, for whatever reason, it contains a heavy concentration of, of red. It skews towards red. So to avoid that little calamity, <laughs> I actually will just continue markering with the 90. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the 90 right over the black just to kind of seal it in and then move on. So the question was asked over the weekend, uh, how do I use the ink pen? Well, and what ink pen do I use? Uh, and my answer to that is Micron, Statler, um, Papermate, one of my favorites, and Pilot. Um, this is what the pen look, creates a line like that. It's water soluble, as I mentioned in an earlier video. You can let that dry and you can put the tone marker, the permanent markers, over the top and it shouldn't smear. So what would I use it for? Well, just to show you, at this point, because I'm doing Chrome, and Chrome has smooth curving edges, I'm going to hunt for anywhere on this reference where I see a, a smooth hard edge uh, reflection. So I see one, well for example, not here because I have a tone transition, but I do have one here. You can see that is a little darker than the 90% gray. It should be. This is 100%. I'm going to let that dry. One thing you want to be careful of too, don't do this. Sometimes you're, you're, before this marker dries, it'll smear the fine tip markers. I learned that the hard way. So I have these other shapes here. You just have to make sure you don't ink the wrong shape. If you don't, you're in good shape. Um, so I'm going to put down a stroke here. So here I'm inking before I drop in the permanent marker. And I do a little freehanding, you know, to close up a shape. Now I could go through it and just fill all that. I'd rather not waste the time and waste the marker. You can see I lift my curve. Whatever tool I'm using, I lift it to move it. I don't just slide it uh, because I don't want to smear. And actually it looks like I did minute. Yeah, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I didn't, but I'm just going to go with it. Uh, yeah, I did make a mistake. So this shape should go like that. So I'm going to adjust right on the fly here and just bring this right over and just fix that and just reunite this whole shape. So it gets a little wider. That's okay. It's a demo. I get to make mistakes. Um, so now I'm just going to fill with the 90%. And the nice thing about this is that that stroke on the outside becomes my nice clean edge. Uh, these markers do tend to bleed a little bit. Now it doesn't look like it's bleeding. It actually is into the line, but it, it doesn't show because I've got a water-soluble line of ink over the top. And look at how clean that edge is. And compared to this, this is clearly sh closer to this. Completely smooth curve line. That's what you want uh, with Chrome. I will be careful here. I don't put it hard line here. Uh, you know what? I actually could do that. Because hidden in here, there is a hard, dark shape. Which actually is the black foam car, whatever he had behind his light. So really, I can change what I just said and say, I could ink a line here. Let's actually do it and see what happens. Uh, because what I'm going to do next is put a tone over it. Uh, 
and again I clean up that edge and I hunt for the curve that matches the area that I'm working on. So right here, that's what French curves uh, do so well, is you just keep rotating them around until you find that area that matches up. And like I say, drop it in place, finish the shape, and now I've got a nice edge there. Then come back with your, your 90. And you can see I had a little light halo on the edge. I just come back right up against the edge of that. And like I said, now it's three passes of marker on this area. Now I have almost a perfect 100% and a nice solid shape. And so what I will do is I'll continue to ink areas like that and block in areas. So what do you do about things like this? Really uh, fine detail. If it's somewhere where you feel you can freehand, you can do that. So right here. <laughs>